Hi everybody. Such a pleasure to have been invited here. I I start with a poem that I dedicated to one of Estonia's most famous scientists, Jan Einarsson. He's an astronomer, and his theory about our world, our universe, having the shape of a honeycomb. Did I pronounce it well? Honeycomb. Mm -hmm. it, became, it, it became world famous, world famous, and in fact, nobody has been able to conquer this theory. So it's quite probable that we have, our universe has a shape of a honeycomb. In my poem, I first read it in Estonia. Olen kärja kujulise universumi, suur, unine, ema mesilene, kes magab üksi oma taru vaikusest voodis, kes ei tumeneb talle. Tunne selle ilma ruumi rahutud käejooni. Olen roomanud läbi igada musta augu. Kevade tulekul toon ilmale tuhat vastsed. Mu Andromeda piimast purvus tuigeldavad nad tarust välja, et kiikuda kõik su saavaneva lõie kõbara, et veeretada valguse tolm võõdaeva tuiseks sõel. And the translation by a bilingual translator, Ilima Lehtara. I hope I remember it by heart, because I don't have it in the written text. And if I make any mistakes, these are very Estonian mistakes, because you know our language is uh, so special. We even don't have he and she there. We have 14 cases in this language. It doesn't resemble any of our neighbors, except Finnish. Finnish is a biggest uh, language of this type, than a European language. Well, in English, I try. I am a big, drowsy queen bee of the honeycomb universe who sleeps alone in her beehive silent bed in the midst of the dark of the winter. I feel the restless lines in the hand of this universe. I have crept through each of its black holes. When spring comes, I bring the thousand of larvae into the world. Drunk on my Andromeda milk, they stagger out of the hive to swing on the opening blossoms of the cosmos to roll light's pollen into the hot coal of the night sky. And uh, just down from Cosmos, I, I will read you a poem about um, what I um, sense on the highway in Estonia. Yesterday, David was so kind to take us to the ocean. That was my first swim in the ocean. And uh, I, I actually felt sorry that I don't sense what's under your highways. I don't sense the past so well as I do in Estonia, hopefully. But um, maybe I will one day. But it really intrigues, it re intrigues me. And the poem is like that. It's actually driving to Silver's farmhouse. And Silver has a special farmhouse close to Estonia, Baltic Sea. And uh, his ancestors have been living there for 300 years. So he's a one of the, uh, the family of Smith, and they've really been Smith all the time. And you see it in, in him and in his instruments also. But, well, 
his village is approaching and I wrote this poem. Under the road there is a spring. Deep within the earth's crust the groundwater bubbles. Under the road there is a long go sledge path. Horse-drawn wagon wheel, wheel ruts. Wagon wheel ruts. Ox-drawn cart wheel furrows. Under the road, there is a slash and burn field, an ancient village, the bed of the St. John's bonfire, the sacrificial stone rolled in to fill the road. Under, under the road, there is a church road. The sound of a bridal procession bagpipes is not very deep at all. Do you hear it? Under the road, there is a wolf skeleton in whose teeth flashes a piece of yarn goose grass red from the striped skirt of a neighboring village. On the road, time sleeps. On the road, a radio plays to pass the time. Airy clouds drift over moments. Fate, the sun blinds. At night, it is pitch dark and cold. Headlights reach out into the future. But anyway, it's called um, Dragon's Diary. I've already seen one thing and another, even a third and a fourth in this world. But wherever I've searched, wherever I've crept, I haven't found sex. What sort of thing is this sex that everyone talks about and falls silent about? I don't understand. Now I'm married to this giant here. Every evening he puts his heavy hands around me. He cuddles me and caresses me. Candle kisses my three mouth and three necks. I become more and more heated from this until I start spouting flames and then gradually cool down like lava that has flowed into a cold spring. Our bed is full of smoke and in the hiss of cooling down I feel the beating of his big heart under my clothes. Thump, thump, thump. But what part of all this, the beginning, the end, the middle, or all of it together, is sex? That I don't know. This morning I asked my husband and he answered with a laugh that sex is when I once lost my tail under a blanket and he helped me to find it. Depressing. How is that supposed to happen again? You can't consciously use your tail under the blanket. That can only happen by chance. And what might also happen by chance is that I will never chance upon it again. Best to forget it altogether. The word is already getting on my nerves. Sex sounds like a trap being sprung. Who invented this mysterious trap anyway? Clap, and all at once it captures your most beautiful moments. It is aggravating and intrusive. It is a third party when you want to be alone, just the two of you. I hope I managed to forget it. I said that to my husband's face. He started laughing again and said he'd been joking that, that losing one's tail certainly isn't sex. But what is it then? I asked angrily. My husband thought about it and said, Sex is closing your mouth nicely now, not thinking about anything and simply being beautiful. I was desperate again. Is sex something that you do for others? 
that seems boring and gorgeous, something like a curtsy. I decided not to turn to my husband anymore in this matter. He only makes light of it when I'm being serious. Yet I sense that I will soon have to take up this subject again, because lately he seems to be somehow annoyingly patronizing. There isn't that clear, bright closeness of before between us anymore. Between us, there is now that curtsy, that trap springing and clap. Nothing is as it was before. 